Well, as you can see, there is a little bit of a gap in my footage between the first videos on the roll cage and where I am right now. Fact is, I'm a farmer. I started this in April, and I had to take a month off, essentially, for uh, for putting a crop in, and and uh, just so many things were happening that uh, to do actually any video footage uh, during the construction of this really really took a lot of time. And uh, so what I've done is just kind of shown you shown you uh, where it is right now. Getting ready to paint it. You can see that. Uh, you can see that I'm using a zinc chromate primer and <clears throat> everything that you can see in terms of structure is pretty much the way I had it before with the exception of the addition of another uh, diagonal in the middle there and we can see the mounts that were added for the for the seat not only on the roll cage but also on the floor as well you can see well, it's a seat belt mount right there, and another seat belt mount, and where the heck are we here? There we go. Let's back off a little bit. There you go. There's a seat mount there, and another seat mount there for the rear, and then a couple seat, front seat mounts and the submarine strap right there. There's plates welded on the other side as well for the seat belt mounts. It's not just a mount welded on the top of some sheet metal in the unibody. So there's the other mount right there. Um, other than that, it's pretty much as it was before. You can see that uh, we've got a, a cross brace up front. Those two holes that you see right in the middle of the frame right there, those are for a mount for the steering wheel which is greatly abbreviated from uh, from the original but it works works fine um, you can see that in the back here I've got not only a back brace which you can see right there but also a series of or a couple of cross braces in the back as well kind of hard to see there. Um, everything of course is is gusseted to the floor. Now you notice that I took the top of the car off in order to uh, make it a lot easier for me to work. I'm a little bigger than most and these cars while they're while they are uh, very long and wide they're not particularly tall. Uh, when this car is in its um, at its normal ride height, a Volkswagen Rabbit, or I'm sorry, Volkswagen Beetle towers over it by about six inches. So they're not particularly tall. So there is absolutely no way that I could have done all the welding and grinding and priming and that sort of thing that I needed to with the roof on the vehicle. Uh, an interesting note that I would make about about um, cutting the roof off of a vehicle. By the way, if we look right here, we can see where there are some sheet metal gussets that have been welded to the front down to that will eventually be welded to the A pillar in the front of the roof by the windshield. Uh, it's going to be a little messy there. I'm going to have to do a little grinding and repriming and painting and that sort of sort of thing, but it's it uh, couldn't be avoided. You can also see, I believe, down in the footwell, that there is a tube that runs from the down tube by the A pillar forward to a plate that's welded to the top left side of the footwell. Same thing on the right side of the vehicle as well. What I was going to say about when you cut the roof off of a vehicle in order to, in order to weld in a roll cage there's a lot of shrinkage that happens when you do this and the issue was once I got the cage welded in I put a door on and uh, and closed it and I found that right here the door wouldn't close it was it had literally shrunk 
it, it uh, had pulled the back of the vehicle forward, the top of the back of the vehicle forward, so that the rear end was higher than it ordinarily would be. And at this point right here, it was pushed or pulled forward a half inch, which is kind of a daunting thing when you consider all the welding and, and so forth that was necessary to get it in there. So what I did is, what you see here, I jacked the vehicle up, I put a couple of jack stands as close to the main hoop location as possible, and then I loaded the trunk with about 800 pounds of concrete blocks, chunks of concrete, steel scrap, all that sort of thing. Um, and it pulled it down in place. Oh, by the way, before I did that, I cut the, as you can see right there, the rear plates for the, for the cross braces and the rear braces. I cut those loose, loaded the weight in it, re-welded it, and nothing is being unloaded from that trunk until I get the roof back on. And incidentally, the roof fits back on just the way it was when I cut it off, there's no gaps. <clears throat> Whereas before, when the doors wouldn't close, right here, there was a half inch gap here. When the A pillar, or the C pillar, and the A pillar were making contact with each other. Now when you weld the roof back on again, it's not just a matter of, of just uh, setting it on there and, and filling in the, the gaps with weld. What you've got to do is you've got to install inserts in the structure, as you can see that I have here, and drill some holes through the, through the parts that you're joining and weld, weld the pillar to the insert on both sides of the joint and then weld around the, and then weld around the joint. Again, essentially what you're doing is drilling a hole here. There's a screw there and a screw on the other side. I'm going to pull one screw out, put a spot weld there, same thing on the other side, put the roof on, do the same thing on the other side. So I'll have two, I'll have two spot welds here and then what I will do is again what I'm doing here is I'm going to, I've got a screw here and a screw here that's holding the insert, this insert into the, into the pillar. I'm going to pull one screw, spot weld that, same thing on the other side. Do that all the way around the vehicle in all six locations. Then set the roof on and do the same thing on the other side. Spot weld there, spot weld there, and then weld all the way around the pillar. Ideally, this would be longer than it is. However, there's really no way to do this given the structure of the vehicle. And I figured that as long as I'm going to have these large gussets that are holding the A-frame to the rest of the vehicle, that uh, it shouldn't be a problem. So, there it is. Tomorrow what I'm going to do is clean this up and run a tack cloth over it. Or, I'm sorry, a little bit of solvent to clean the surface and uh, take a tack rag and clean all the dust off and then and then paint it. The color is going to be the original HEN is the code green otherwise known as British Racing Green or Hunter Green or Highland Green depends on who you're talking to. So this is where we're at at this point. It's been a lot of work, a lot more work than I thought it would be but uh, for what I'm going to use the car for I decided that I really, really needed to put a roll cage in the vehicle.